Okay, the purpose of this uh, video right here is to uh, show you how to do the catering database for Lab 4. Some people asked about it. I thought maybe previous labs had covered it, but that's okay. When you're learning how to do something, it's always good to have some kind of visual. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a new uh, Visio item, and I'm going to go with a my computer allows me. I'm going to go with a crow's foot diagram if I can find one. There it is. There it is. And uh, I'm probably going to, just to make it easy, I'm going to go to the orientation and make this landscape. Okay, in this case we need a few entities. The one that seems to use up a lot of the relationships in the instructions is the engagement uh, entity. So I'm going to go this, I'm going to call this the engagement. And it's going to have a primary key, which will be the engagement ID. And I'm going to take that. And then there's also an employee table. And I'm going to add the employee table and there will be an employee ID in it as the primary key and then you're told that each engagement can have many employees but each employee can be with many engagements so that means we need to have not a relationship but a many-to-many well, we need a relationship eventually, but we need to have a many-to-many -many relationship, which involves having, in the center here, an employee engagement table. And from you, what you know from previous labs is that when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, you must have um, a junction table, which has a concatenated key composed of the keys of the two tables you're trying to join. So we're going to do that. Play AID. And they are both primary keys and foreign keys together. So this is both the primary key and the foreign key. Okay, and then we have to get the relationship in there. And I'm going to take this and um, the many goes, the one goes on the, you know, the right table and the many goes on this side. And I, I'm having better luck with straight connectors these days, so I'm going to do that instead. And it moves with it, so that's good. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to grab a relationship and put it here. And just to make it easier on me, I'm going to make it straight. And except, let me rotate it. Yeah, well, the many side goes here to on the employee engagement side. See that? Many. And the one goes there. Let's make sure it moves with it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. So that's done. Now, um, the other thing they throw at you is that each engagement must have a employee, uh, must have an assistant chef assigned to it. And you might be tempted to have a, an assistant chef table. However, that's not the way it works in this case, because an assistant an employee would have, among other things, a last name and a first name. So to have an assistant chef table would be duplicating the last name and first name, and we don't want that. So what we do instead is I'm going to put another attribute in this table, and I'm going to call this uh, you know like I don't know what's, a, what's roll, and it would be stored in here would be. You know, who an assistant chef, regular employee, stuff like that. But so one of these employees will be assigned to be an assistant chef, 
and I'm going to take this relationship now and I'm going to, I mean, he'll have the same employee ID whether he's an assistant chef or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that fact in order to make sure that each engagement has an assistant chef um, as assigned to it. So I'm going to go assistant chef ID here, which is a foreign key. And I am going to have it point to the employee table. And we know that only one assistant chef is assigned to each engagement. But in the inadvertently lifted this one off. There we go. I would like this much better if it just attached to the to the table. There we go. Okay, so what you should be getting out of this is that each is that each um, entity here can can participate in more than one relationship with other tables. Need to write to Bill Gates about this. It's this you've made this extremely difficult for you to uh, to do your relationships. Okay, there you go. So you can see that when it comes to a regular employee, there's a many-to-many -many relationship between the employee and the engagement. But when there is an assistant chef, each assistant there's only one assistant chef. Um, in, in each engagement, and that associates also with an employee whose role would be entered in as assistant chef when you actually start to implement this in access. So that's how you would handle this whole assistant chef and this employee thing. Okay. Now, the other aspect of this is that there are menu items that go on a particular at a particular engagement because the client will decide, you know, what food they're going to have at the um, you know, at the event they're having or the engagement. So that is also a many-to-many -many relationship because you can have many different types of, of, uh, of, of menu items and they can appear on many different engagements menus. So over here we're gonna have a menu item table and then we're also gonna have an engagement menu item table and of course this is a many-to-many -many relationship which is very formulaic you do this the same way every time you have a menu item ID here which is a primary key and you'll also have an engagement ID which is also a, uh, a primary key and a foreign key so I'm going to set this as primary I'm also going to set this as yes. a foreign key. I'm going to click on this. I have more success getting the menu I want when I wait for it to be a four point crosshair. Okay, set foreign key right there. And now we have to fight with the relationship line to get it to work. So that means that we attach this to that and this to that and I'm gonna make it a straight connector again and then we need to do the same thing over here I'm going to take this relationship line and uh, I'm gonna make it straight and the one side is gonna go right attached to that and the many is gonna go here and there you go you have that same many-to-many -many relationship now 
there are going to be a number of attributes also to each of these that you have to add in. And I'm not going to do so. I forgot to put menu item ID here. Menu item ID. That's a foreign key. So there's going to be uh, uh, some attributes that go in here. And also, don't forget about the customer. Because they also said that there can be a customer who can book many engagements, but engagement can be associated with only one customer. So I'm going to go customer ID, and whoops, not customer ID, this is a customer table name. And then I'm going to go customer ID right here as the primary key. And this points to the engagement table, which is going to have to have customer ID in here as a foreign key. So now I have to join this up in the appropriate relationship. So I'm going to take this and uh, each engagement would associate with only one customer. So we need to prevent a mess from happening. I'm going to make this a straight connector again. And I'm going to take this many side and put it here so it joins with this table. And I'm going to take the one and make it join with this table as well. So each customer can book many engagements, but each engagement associates with only one customer. Now, the other thing they said was you can only have one engagement at any given time. And there's a way of doing that by making a key composed of the year, day, and month and time and that that will make it so you can only have one year month day and time in your database because primary keys must be unique i personally don't like that method i feel that it's it's complicated and it's not even effective because even if you give a time that is five minutes later than one engagement that means you can have two engagements in your database because you'll all have the same year same month same day and a slightly different time which the database will not be able to enforce. So I don't agree with that method. I think that if you want to make sure that you only have one engagement at any one time, you make sure when you write your software that you check the database, do a query and see if there is anything at the time you're booking or within two hours of it or you know, two hours after because you know you only want to have your people out in one engagement at a time due to staffing levels in this case. So I've relieved you of having to deal with that requirement of having only one engagement at any given time because I don't feel that the way it would be implemented in the database is sound. So this is your completed your completed uh, uh, structural diagram of this. Now you need to go in and need to add all of your different um, all of your different attributes into the, the database and um, I'm gonna leave that to you but you know, if you, the, the number of items, menu items, in a particular uh, engagement would go into this engagement menu item table. So the junction table can actually hold attributes. So that's important. If the dish is vegetarian, it would belong in this table right here because it's something that is a, is, uh, depends on the menu item. It's not related to the engagement. Now, something doesn't become a vegetarian as soon as you assign it to you know, uh, a bar mitzvah, for example, it, that makes no sense. It's a product, it's a, the, um, whether it's vegetarian or not, for example, is a property of the menu item, so that would go in there. But the quantity at any ga engagement that you need would go in the engagement menu item column, uh, table. So I, you need to go through and you need to, um, to make sure that you can, uh, put all these relationships in here. Make sure you've got many to many between these two tables. Make sure that you've got many to many between these two tables, engagement and menu item. Uh, many to many between engagement and employee as evidenced by this. And that you also have a one to many relationship for a customer. And that's pretty much what we're expecting. Um, they do say things like you've got to have a minimum of each you know each engagement must have a minimum of one assistant chef well we've covered that here because you can see if i expand this you see how you've got a zero here and you've got 
uh, crow's foot here. These are called minimum cardinalities, these symbols on the inside. The zero here and the first hashtag you see right kind of there. Those are the minimum cardinalities. So this says each employee who is an assistant chef can be an, can be an assistant chef at zero or many engagements. And each engagement must have a minimum of one employee that is an assistant chef and that's what that hashtag right there says at a maximum an employee can be who is an assistant chef can be an assistant chef at many different engagements and uh, each engagement at most can have only one assistant chef so you've got outer or maximum cardinalities which is this crow's foot and this outer hashtag and you've got minimum cardinalities which is this is zero and this one if you ever need to do minimum maximum cardinalities See what it says set in symbol? You've got zero or more or one or more. You know, one and only one, which is what this one is, or zero or one. So you can see how you've got minimum cardinalities kind of zero, one, one, zero. Maximum cardinalities are more, more, one, one, more, many, many, one, one. So that's how you do minimum and maximum cardinalities. So I hope that helps. That should show you how to click your way through the Visio portion of Lab 4. And I look forward to seeing yours after you put in all of these non-key columns that are referred to in the lab. Thank you.